Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> Welcome into another edition of the Vegas Squares podcast, where we are just a bunch of losers trying to pick winners. Love that tagline. I, it really is a great tagline, and I am. Because uh, I was trying to remember earlier, I just couldn't remember. I guess am, I'm just one of those losers. We embody that. Oh, we really do. It's actually Token really does too, which we'll get into in a second when we oh, talk yeah. about our, our contest picks here. Oh yeah. Anyway, uh, welcome in again. Thank you everyone for joining us on Token's birthday. Happy birthday, Token. Woo. Hope you're dead before the next one. And That's we, what my sister always used to say. Be <laughs> lucky to make it to the next one. And we are raring to go with our NFL picks coming up on week three. Uh, I am Spike. Apparently I'm hosting today, even though I said I don't want to host today, but fucking Aaron's apparently being too lazy to do this himself. Uh, I, I barely had enough energy to get dressed. We have... You guys yeah, put had, on a penguin shirt. You guys could have had naked hosts tonight. We had three quarters of the team in studio I today. Put, I at least am glad you put on a shirt and pants. Yes, we, we do appreciate the non-nudity in the studio, because otherwise we'd have to go to human resources. Do we have a human resources department here? I know we have producer, a producer, probably. but... We don't. We do have a suggestion box in the bathroom. It's that... Uh, Bin right next to the toilet. No, I, I thought you were going to say it was that white bowl that you hit the lever and it goes down. Oh, like a pneumatic tube. That is, uh, that might be human resources. We just flush all the problems. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> On my right is Aaron. Say hello, even though you've been talking for a minute here. Hello, even though you've been talking for a minute here. All right, great. And across the table from me is Token Tony. What's up? The birthday boy. Uh, not joining us today is Tony Johnson. I think he got arrested in the uh, Raid Area 51 uh, event that was happening up north. So Was he the one trying to butt probe uh, an alien? Yeah, I think he was. And, uh, you know, when he... He forgot his loop, though. It was, like he, we saw him running into Area 51, but I don't think anybody saw him leave. So I don't know if maybe, maybe or... Maybe he found a wife up there. He was probably looking for a job application. If or when he will uh, be joining us again. So, you know, best of luck to you. A fake token wherever you might live be. long and prosper <laughs> <laughs> anyway like i said welcome into the vegas squares podcast uh, i guess before we get started we have to talk about some sponsors we have including the granddaddy of them all 12 ounce sports who put on our drivel a few times every week uh we have seat giant uh use promo code 12 ounce sports uh, for I can't read fucking Aaron's handwriting. We just here. checked before I we turn on the mics. Can you read? See, the I, I could read. I could read the names of the sponsors. I forgot to read what you have written underneath. It I'll says, tell you what. I'll do the sponsor. It says promo code twelve ounce sports and then gibberish. Yes, it's a uh, seat giant promo code twelve ounce sports for discounts on sporting events, concerts, and theater it tickets. It does not fucking say that. Not with that handwriting. It, well, yeah, it can it say whatever I squiggle, want with this squiggle, handwriting. Squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. <laughs> Uh, also, Thrive Fantasy for all your daily fantasy needs. Use 12, uh, promo code 12 ounce sports. And also, BetSperts, our gambling advice website. Use Football35 promo code for a, a discount now. You, you can get their uh, entire package for a year for just $3.25 a month. So, back to the host with the most. That's actually not a bad price for that. Yeah. Uh, as, been, assuming that their information is good. but I mean, Yeah, I've been yeah. looking it over. I'm... I'm currently satisfied with it i'm hoping that the picks that i put i strictly put my nfl picks on there um so far eight and six i'm putting exactly what we do on the podcast okay uh just for mine and so far i don't i don't i guess if you if you're successful in it, it, it breaks down areas of expertise it breaks down like okay if you're successful in west coast nfl games or mountain west football games or Big sky basketball game. It starts to develop expertises, and you can you have the ability to become what they call a bet spurt. Obviously, you know in the name uh, where people can follow you in again big sky basketball or Horizon League, you know whatever or women LPAGA tour or hell token be, can become a tennis bet spurt. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. 
So Some Chinese tienes. What the fuck was uh, that? No, that was like some Louisiana version of. I don't, I, let's just move on. Good old it's classic. His birthday, he gets one pass. Okay, all right, that's fair. All right, so I need about twenty for this podcast, though. <laughs> Act about twenty. <laughs> Not anymore. Months. So before we get into our week three picks for the NFL, uh, we just want to update you on our contest that we have going on. Uh, we're talking about two out of the three contests that we're doing amongst ourselves on air. Uh, the first one is where we are every week picking seven games. Uh, there's a couple stipulations that go along with this. Uh, we're picking against the spread or uh, dogs on the money line or totals. You have to have at least one total every week. Uh, you get a bonus point if you pick a dog that's over a certain amount. And we also have random dice where the games are picked by my wife, the sides are picked by a random roll of the die. If you beat that record every week, you get an extra bonus point. So these uh, these picks are kind of not going great for some of us. I don't know why. Before your whole explanation with that would just reminded me of uh, whose line is it anyway? Everything's made oh, up and yeah. the points don't matter. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the so, green screen. <laughs> I, I, I will say in week two the random dice went two of five, mm. and one of us did not beat that record of two and five. The birthday boy. Take a bow, Token Tony. That was uh, an impressive one in six week. You're last over week. two against. Hey, at least guys. I got one out of my three right though. That's true. That is true. Uh, the uh, the other contest we are are picking three games every week, have to pick a half-point line, and if the line is even, you have to move it a half-point in the wrong direction. So uh, it's a little bit worse for you. And yes, last week, Token Tony did get one of his picks right. It was actually Arizona-Baltimore, which you hit on both of your contests. And I actually had a ticket on that, too. Yeah, oh, nice. I would imagine you should be betting what you pick on the show. Yeah, I do. I bet... Everything I bet and some. I bet everything I and, bet and then some. <laughs> and I still got crushed. God. Do you remember when he hosted last week? I know. TBT no. to a scarier time. That, that, that was uh, that was a little little nuts. But going into week three right now, Aaron is in the lead in our seven game contest with eleven points. Woohoo! I am currently in second place with eight points. Uh, Tony Johnson. With seven points, the random dice have six points, and <laughs> Token Tony sitting on a big fat three, three <laughs> points. Hey, at least it's better than zero. That is true. Better, yeah. But you know what? I mean, it's a long season. It is a long season. I we, feel like we had lots of ebbs and flows. I got out to a huge lead last year, like by like week six, and had to hold on. So by like yeah. two points, and the, and the books correct themselves, you know. Look, let's not lie to anybody. We're probably more part of the public than we are part of the Sharps. Oh, yeah. And the public tends to get it right in the first quarter of the season. And as the season progresses, injuries happen, you know, balls bounce the wrong way. Uh, the books the books slowly correct themselves over the course of an NFL season. Well, and uh, the flip side of this is, you know, Last year we had, if you got a game wrong, you got negative points. We're not doing any kind of penalty for well, wrong wrong answers this year. Yeah, so Token would be far in the negative. Oh, you? yeah. He, you, you, so you're not going backwards at this point is what I'm trying to say, Token. I'm looking for a, a, a light at the end of the tunnel for you here. You can't finish in the say, negative. This saying year. there is a chance, but... I need more than one week to catch up. We're not yeah. saying there's a chance. We're just saying you're not going to finish in the negative. Yes, but you know, with the, you take enough of these uh, money line dogs, if they come in, you start getting I bonus points. I start doing the random dice. Yeah, yeah. You get, is if you're beating the random dice, you're doing okay. So, and the random dice, I'm not. Uh, and they're not doing that great. Either, I, so. I'm not a big fan of their picks this week on a few of them. So you're you might be in good Which shape. Means they'll here. be six and zero. Possibly. Anyway, you want to dive in? Let's dive in. I'd actually like to make a side bet with Token oh. on what week. I'm going to set the line at eight and a half. No, seven and a half on when Spike starts fading himself. <laughs> oh, I thought you said week four and a half last week. I did, but I feel like he's generally in it right now. What about myself? When do I start fading myself? I always thought you were. <laughs> I actually... I have a twist this week I haven't mentioned yet. Uh-oh. I actually picked three games that I liked. Pick sides on those. 
put those for my three and my seven. The other four, I just picked the random game and did a random dice. Oh, man. Wow. I have it on the back. All right. I dig that. (laughs) I have no confidence after last week. I was really confident going into last week with all my picks and shattered. Yeah, that was uh, that was a rough one for you last week. But uh, hey, like we said, it's still a long season. You have plenty of time to fall further behind. I mean, catch up with us, and uh, we'll. <laughs> I can definitely fall further behind. <laughs> yeah, we'll see totally what you can do. Plausible. Anyway, that seems like the favorite. We're jumping in. All right, let's do it. Denver at Green Bay. Uh, line opened at Green Bay is a six and a half point favorite. We have it right now as a seven point favorite for Green Bay. Uh, total currently sitting at forty two and a half. Uh, Aaron Rodgers going against what promised to be a good Denver defense. I promised that. Actually, they are number two against the pass. So. Yeah, well, and, and I, I had hoped to see more out of Denver's defense. I was actually going to ride them pretty well into the season uh, on some futures bets and trying to see what I could do to bet these guys long term, and they have just have not impressed me whatsoever. Uh, I currently uh, don't have a pick on this game. I think, I, I think you're I think you're you're bashing on the wrong side here. I think I think. Sweet Fleet Flacco is the uh, the problem, and his offensive line. I mean, freaking Garrett Bowles has been called for double digit holding calls in two weeks. I mean, Oof. that's incredibly ridiculous. Yeah, that that's uh, that, that's not going to bode well for long term success, especially in that uh, in that division, where you have to beat both Kansas City and the L.A. Clippers in order to move up well, and fairness, try to win that. Yeah, Detroit beat the L.A. Clippers, so anybody can do that. Yeah, well, that, and, that, and that Oakland is true. upstart, surprisingly. I, I mean, they're one and one. I mean, oh, yeah, Oakland's Denver's, actually Denver's, Denver's in the cellar right now, and but. it doesn't look good for them to go one and two. Uh, so what do we got for a line here? But right now, uh, Green Bay is a seven-point favorite. I am not on this game whatsoever. I would lean towards Green Bay in this spot, but uh, I'm going to... Punt over to somebody else that may or may not have a pick on this one. I don't know who wants to go first here. Well, I do not have a pick, but I will put my two cents in here on this. I want, I'm begging just for anything. I don't know why, but I feel like Joe Flacco isn't done as an NFL quarterback as much as it just the writing has been on the wall that he is done. Uh Seven, I mean, obviously it doesn't seem like a ton of points. It feels like it's begging you to take the Packers in this spot. Um, I, I don't catch a money line. If you can find a money line for me, I'm curious. But uh, the last 80 regular season games at Lambeau Field uh, under with Aaron Rodgers, the Packers are 63-16-1. and one. So winning the game outright for the Broncos seems like a tall task, especially when you have... Shane Falco and Garrett Bowles. Uh, Money line roughly three fifty ish. Is that what it is? I've got no, not with a seven point spread. For Green Bay, it's minus three sixty at Westgate right now. Plus oh, uh, plus yeah, two eighty wow, for Denver. Dude. Okay, yeah, I guess so. Huh. man, that's a huge jump. I mean, you can clearly see that they're just begging you to take the number on Green Bay here. Um, I feel it's trappy. I feel like somehow Green Bay's. Uh, Excuse me. Denver's defense is going to be able to control uh, Aaron Rodgers to the tune of Green Bay gets a victory. I'm not sure if they cover, but I actually have no play on this. I actually do have a play on I know, this one. We were waiting on you, motherfucker. I have it both on my three and my seven. So on my seven, I'm taking them minus the seven. Definitely think Aaron Rodgers does not even keep this marginally close as. The score kind of indicated last week. Did you know the score kind of amputated? I, I said didn't get it, didn't get to get it or whatever. I indicated <laughs> that was much la- last week. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I was on the wrong side of that one. Hey, who's the running back for the Giants? Saquon Barkley. <laughs> Sorry, that was too easy. Go for it. Just, just go. I, I'm not even going to bother interjecting. Oh, yeah. Just go. Interject. You might as not even put my picks in because I'm going to probably go 0-7. No, so. I mean, I'm actually excited, the fact that you like Green Bay in both of your picks, because I'm going to unload the account on, <laughs> <laughs> on Denver. Shots fired. Yeah. Not surprised, though. So you got Denver. You might put your future kids to college with my 
or uh, Fear Fades. Uh, this man, you can too if you follow him on Action Network and Betsperts. <laughs> and on Twitter. Unless if you're following my tennis picks, then maybe you might do all right. Um, yeah, Packers minus the seven in my seven, and Packers minus seven and a half in the three games. So. I definitely think Aaron Rodgers does not take a step back in the second half. He just kind of goes forward and uh, does well. I was fortunate last week to be facing Aaron Rodgers in uh, fantasy football, and he put up about almost 20 in the first half and then scored a negative in the second. So I yeah, I'm just not very sure. Yeah, the first half, that. they were amazing. They got out to a 21 nothing lead. I mean, they're facing a very similar defense in Denver that they have. Uh, in Minnesota, you know, good linebackers, good edge rushers, and competent corners. I, I think I think it's a scary matchup. I, I think I think the books are begging you to take Green Bay, and you know I, I'm never going to oblige the books. Uh, except I did yesterday. They begged me to take Michigan, and I did. Yeah, that line should that did something. not work out for me at all. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 score, I even said it, it too. Was actually. I even said it on the on the college podcast. I said the lot, the books are begging you to take Michigan, and what do I do when I wake up? Fucking take Michigan. Uh, yeah. By the way, the Harbaugh train is on my officially on my do not bet list. So oh, we'll yeah. talk about that next college football podcast. Yeah. Speaking and of teams that are on <laughs> are, are on a, a personal do not bet list, let's move on to the next game: Detroit at Philadelphia. After Detroit completely fucked up in Week One, I vowed never to take them again. Uh, you bet against them. Th- well, it doesn't season. mean you bet against them. Either. But <laughs> that's the thing. I love them in this spot. Even though they're going on the road, they're facing what's left of the Philadelphia Eagles after they lost about two-thirds of their offensive weapons in their game last week. Uh, the line opened with Philadelphia as a seven-point favorite. It's moved. It's jumped all over the place. Uh, currently sitting at Philadelphia minus the five, total at 45 and a half. Uh, like I said, I have no play on this one, but and that's only because of my personal vendetta against the fucking Detroit Lions. But if I was on this play, I would be all over the Lions in this one. Yeah, no play on the spread on this one for me. If fuck the Lions, I hope they lose. I hope, <laughs> I hope they get zero because I actually have the Eagles defense in fantasy football. Fair enough. Almost every league, so. This week. Wait, are you saying you don't have a play on this one? I do have a play on this. Oh, okay, one. I was gonna say I got. I, 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 I said I don't play. have a play on the spread. Ah, oh, gotcha. No, I got under forty-five and a half. I think the Eagles' defense is ready to play this one, make up for the lack of offense, and they won a close game by a field goal. However, I'm not touching the spread. I think five's gone too much money on the Lions side, and I see like a seventeen to ten, seventeen fourteen kind of game. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually on this uh, double time, and I am on a complete opposite side of token in all aspects of it, it seems, in this spot. I've got this uh, Eagles minus five. I have that also in my three games, so that's, uh, I guess, what, Eagles minus five and a half. Correct. I also have... I hope they win big. I also have the over uh, 45 and a half in this spot. But a low-scoring game. (laughs) My, my, My thought process on this is is kind of like you... The minute I start thinking, oh, the Lions may have something cooking here, they turn around and fuck me in the ass and don't even spit on it. <laughs> so, hey, that's the story of my following. I, I'm not too worried. I think Alshon Jeffrey is, at this point, leaning towards he's a go. Deshaun Jackson, uh, the fact that he's not in doesn't really move the needle for me. Um, Nelson Aguilar is a serviceable receiver who can spread the field. They have Zach Ertz. Dallas Goddard's coming back. Um, he's probable to play unless something catastrophic happens. So, theoretically, when you say two-thirds of the offense, it's only Deshaun Jackson at this point. That's officially ruled out. So I don't think that we have a catastrophic element here. The thing that needs to get going for Philadelphia is the running game. Because neither Miles Sanders nor Jordan Howard seems like they want to take over the starting job uh, at this point. I'm thinking Carson Wentz, uh, Doug Peterson, and that offense, they want to get the running game going, which is something that Detroit has trouble stopping at this point right now. Because they do have actually a pretty good back seven. So I'm thinking set up the pass by establishing the run. I think we're looking at 27-19. 
E A G L E S, and that goes over the total. Yeah, so, that line's defensive line is atrocious. T- took a major step back during this off season. I agree. And on top of that, like I said, I, I, I'm not getting high. I'm not getting high on Detroit. After I, I actually did tail them last week, so that's going to be. I'm going to cool it. That's, that's going to be my, my Detroit quota for at least the first quarter of the season. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. And especially when you still have rumblings that have been going on since about week six of last year that Matt Patricia's lost the locker room. Uh, he's not doing anything to... With all due respect, I don't see that anywhere. Neither do I, but, I mean, you still have the rumblings coming out of, like... From where? I don't see that. I don't even read that anywhere, though. Like you, ha- I've seen that on uh, the fucking... From retweets from people with blue check marks, so I assume they know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> so, you know... I mean, I, you know, what the fuck? I don't know anybody in the what? Detroit media, what? so... And, and, and no disrespect, because there are a lot of good information sources on Twitter, but what... Might be worse, retweeting someone's retweet that has bullshit information, or citing Wikipedia for a paper. Ooh, citing Wikipedia. Ooh, oh, Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> Saying Wikipedia is apparently too. So. <laughs> What's the Giants running back's name? <laughs> He's number one, <laughs> Brandon Jacobs. <laughs> All right, so uh, we both have picks in this. You yeah. don't have a pick. In this I, I, I'm not touching this one. Uh, and neither is uh, Fake Token, oh, yeah. neither are the random We didn't even guys. give Fake Tokens Green Bay or Denver, right? He didn't have anything on he, that? I, I will interject when they have it, but okay. yeah, oh, not, none of, you two are the only ones that have picks on this game. Okay. So, uh, Fair enough. We're getting into it, and we're going to move on to the next game, which I am hoping is a 55-45 type shootout game, Baltimore at Kansas City. Uh, this game is probably going to be the barn burner. If New England wasn't on at the exact same time, this is the one that I would be watching. Thank goodness for two TVs in the uh, in the household of mine. Yeah, no, yeah. that's uh, I, I probably got to do that in the living room. Although I don't know if the wife probably would go put for it, that. Put a third one up here too. <laughs> uh, line opened at Kansas City minus the six. It's moved to five and a half, so not a ton of movement on that one. Total currently sitting at fifty two. Uh, and I am on this one on the total. I'm going over. I'm really hoping that we see a lot of points, much like the Kansas City L.A. Rams game of last year that put up what 108 points or something. Some I think forth, that, back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean it, we were at Lucille's uh, watching that game, right? If I remember right. Yes, we were. Yeah. Ridiculous game. Now that uh, uh, I can't remember, goddamn Baltimore's quarterback's name that Lamar Jackson. That's the one who I was going to say Lashawn Jackson, but that is not. Right. I kept trying to say that he would finally throw for over 200 yards every game last season, and he never did. You're about nine months too late. He too early. Finally found his groove. I love Pop it. This cherry. <laughs> I am not super high on Kansas City's defense, so it seems like this is the type of shootout game that uh, everybody is hoping and expecting it's going to be. I am very excited for this one, so I am sitting on over the total at 52, and I I wish I could watch this one, but I'm going to be glued to the massacre that's going to happen uh, with uh, at Foxborough. So you know what this means, Token. Yeah. Hashtag pound the under. <laughs> yeah. You know why? <laughs> Because I'm on the over as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's definitely a play on the under if you want to fade our asses on our uh, stupid picks. I'm just going to put a zero in the score column on <laughs> yeah, this you might as well. <laughs> R- Big red X. It's not even a bold strategy. That's a good strategy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't Oh, Are you? Yeah, j- j- just over from like 7, 52. I, I don't think it will go as quite as high as the Rams Chiefs last year, but I see like a... 35 to 30 ish kind of game. And I can totally understand where that, you know, that process comes from to get that pick because I mean last year these two teams played actually a mini thriller if you want to say uh 27-24 in overtime and this is on the road in Kansas City which um we have again and we also had a far more inferior Lamar Jackson then than we do now. So we have a better running game with Mark Ingram. Everything points to the Ravens really with an upset win, but 
it's fucking hard to go into Arrowhead and beat the MVP uh, and a team that, even without Tyreek Hill, just looks phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. What I will say is, is LaShawn McCoy is the X Factor, not LaShawn Jackson. <laughs> uh, LaShawn McCoy is the X Factor because they've already ruled Damian Williams out. Uh, so you've got to hope, for Patrick Mahomes' sake, that there is some semblance of a running game because this defense in or, Baltimore... Or some kind of screen pass or something in. Sure. Uh, but this defense is good enough that if there's no running game, they can sit back there in, in zone coverage or Tampa 2 and make Patrick Mahomes look like not the MVP. Like a high scorer? Yes, exactly. So I, I think everything points towards the Ravens in this spot. Uh, I don't officially have a pick, but I I would like to to officially throw it out there to sprinkle a little bit on, on uh, Baltimore's money line, which is currently sitting at 2-1. to one. Okay. A little less than I thought it was going to be, but... Yeah, I mean, that's, that's certainly not a bad pick. I think Baltimore on the road, especially in that uh, that environment, is going to be a little difficult for them, but... Agreed. Oh, it's not going to be an easy yeah. task, and I, and I think I would obviously much prefer 250 or 300, but... Sure. The fact that we do have six and five and a half across the board, and we're only getting two to one on our money, makes me feel like the books might think Baltimore has a legit shot, and does, they don't want to get... Any, any more pounded than they, they're already going to. So, yeah. Anything from you, the dice, or fake, to, fake and token? No, nothing, uh, nothing yet. But this Look game <laughs> this game that we're going to talk about next, both fake token and the dice have a play on it. Nice. Right. I kind of wish I had jumped on this one when the before the line had moved because I think it would have been better. But let's move to Cincinnati and Buffalo. Uh, Buffalo at home opened as a four-point favorite. They have moved to a six-point favorite. Okay. Uh, this was almost on my list, but yeah. Total started at 40.5. It's up to 43.5 right now. And this is sort of weird for me because Cincinnati, you know, the, the Red Rockets looked actually good. He's, like, among the lead leaders in passing yards. Like, they've looked great through the air, but... Uh, does anybody know what their rushing average is so far this season per game? 40, 40-ish? Total yardage. Aaron, you have oh, a guess? Oh, for the, total for the year? Well, the, the to, year. total per game for the year, through two games. It's got to be like 40 or under. Aaron? If total for the year for two games, yeah, I'm going to say it's probably like 52 yards. 29 and a half. Wow, and Gio Bernard leads the, the way with uh, 27 yards on 13 carries. Yeah. So this, <laughs> yeah. Is, uh, this is not a great spot for Cincinnati, especially going into Buffalo. Buffalo has been playing better than I expected them to. Uh, that offensive line has looked really stout, and I really like what they're doing over there. Uh, I don't have a play on this game, but both the dice and fake token do. Both of them are on Cincinnati. Fake Token is taking Cincinnati plus the six. Uh, the dice are going Cincinnati money line nice. at plus 225. Oh, so they nice. are going for bonus points on this sucker. What's if that? Cincinnati wins extra? today, you can just hang it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, 225, I, what, I might two just, points? I might just uh, 225. Hey. I might just hang myself. <laughs> I think that's two point. I think that's just below the threshold for that extra bonus point there. Shit, go dice. But uh, <laughs> yeah, th- this is. No, actually, in this one, if I were to pick a side, I'd probably lean towards the Bills minus the points. But so that means she's probably bet the Bengals. Yeah, and that, that's why I said I wish I had jumped on it earlier when it was Buffalo minus four as opposed to Buffalo minus the six, which it's sitting at right now. But yeah, I mean, th- this is a great uh, another one of those matchups. I. As much as I hate trying to root for Buffalo because they're a division rival, as much as I shit all over them last year for moving up in the draft to take a quarterback that lost to UNLV, I, I have been impressed with what Buffalo is doing all year. Well, let's so. take a look and consider the competition in that spot. Uh, you know, they had a nice comeback win against the Jets. Let's not get that twisted. Um, but you know, playing against Eli, he's, he's basically gift wrapping his farewell tour at this point. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Um, I do like the fact that Leslie Frazier, the Bills play really good defense. The thing that scares me right now is Josh Allen really needs a, a competent complement, um, and Frank Gore, the wheels are just getting rusty. And Devin Singletary has been ruled out in this game. So I think that's really key. Is 
is Frank Gore the kind of guy that's still going to give you 20 carries to pace the offense and set up a pass? Probably not. Probably not. So the, the situation here is is we're relying on Josh Allen to be both the passing game and the running game. I don't trust it. Also, the fact that um, the dog in this uh, in this contest the last eight times is six and two, albeit most of the time that is the Bills who are the dog in this spot. The Bengals on their last five road games are undefeated against the spread and undefeated against the spread in their last five road games against AFC opponents. They are also riding a five and one against the spread uh, hot streak overall. So last six games they are five ones against the spread. I like I like Buffalo to win this game by about three to four points. Okay, so not to cover, but to correct. Win. I don't have an official play, but I and this if this is not the case, if if Buffalo ends up running circles around uh, Andy Dalton, uh, the Bengals will be on my DNBL for at least six weeks. Okay, DNB. Oh, do not bet do not list. Bet list. Okay, yeah. that, that I get yeah. you. I've I've actually been on them both weeks this year, and I'm one and one, and I don't like how they they played against San Francisco, who yeah. I believe might be a legitimate team. Yeah, still not sold on San Fran, but had two road wins back to back, and they crushed both their opponents. Yeah, it's still early, and their opponents were kind of weaker. So. Yeah, Garoppolo's got to stay healthy for them to be well, a legit contender. Uh, but, it's week three. That's but that's, sure that's week, week, week three, and he's healthy. I mean, they're but, they're contenders right now. Yeah, he he's never well, that, stayed that healthy. Last year, even though too, it was week three. I, he was healthy and he got hurt. I don't think they were contenders last year. I think they were content. I think they're contenders this year. I think they're more contenders this year than they were last year. But yeah. So what point are you trying to prove? That that they're still overrated though. They're not going to make the playoffs. All right, throw me a number. I'll, I'll give you a, a minus Jimmy, uh, a Jimmy Garoppolo asterisk. Give me a number. Give me their win total. Seven and a half. I'll take the over, the provided goal. Garoppolo stays healthy. Okay. I'm on them. And the fact of the matter is, is my my fiance is in Seattle trying to win games, and I still, I know, even though he knows I'm going to take the 49ers, we're going to have a talk about that later. Yeah. Right. There will be some dishes thrown, <laughs> some weave pulled out. Love and basketball. All right, let's move on from this. <laughs> let's move on to a game where every single one of us has a play. Nice. <laughs> every single one of us has some kind of play on. That might be the most interesting game in the morning. The Falcons traveling to Indianapolis to take on. I love it. The Jacoby Brissett led Colts. Mm, smoke uh, percent. Yes, th- this is a game that actually looks very intriguing. Another one that's happening at the exact same time as my Patriots. Uh, this <coughs> line hasn't really moved too much either. It opened as Indianapolis is a two-point favorite. It's only moved half a point down to a one and a half points uh, total, sitting at forty-seven. And right now. <laughs> I think Indianapolis is playing good football. Uh, it scares the shit out of me that Vinatieri didn't retire. Uh, so him missing field goals and extra points is certainly a possibility, and not something. I felt I'm, bad whoever had them in fantasy. Last yeah, I, I, I'm not. I feel bad whoever crazy a 45 year old kicker in fantasy football. But uh, this guy allowed a good history. But you're right. I actually know. I take that back. I don't feel bad for them. This. Uh, I hope they got Antonio Brown too. <laughs> Is that the producer? <laughs> might have been. She had it. She might have been a Terry. She definitely has Brown. Uh, right oh, now, sounds dirty. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Right now, with Indianapolis as a one and a half point favorite at home, even though Vinatieri could miss a, uh, a a gimme field goal or an extra point at some point, I still like Indianapolis minus one and a half simply because. Atlanta just turns the ball over too much for my taste, and I don't think they can win games on the road if they can't hang on to the ball. So I am rolling with Indy minus the one and a half. Uh, Fake Token is taking the opposite side of me. He is on Atlanta plus the one and a half. And the Dice, the Dice Dice Baby, rolling under the total of 47. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually on the side of the random dice. I random dice this one into the under. <laughs> All right. <laughs> under the 47. Uh, <laughs> He's going to kill himself trying to make this pick. He might. I, I'm choking on those ghost pepper chips still. 
Uh, <laughs> Your asshole's gonna choke on a ghost pepper chip here in mean, about. I, I, I might need to put some toilet paper in the freezer. Oh, oh <laughs> Jesus Christ! No, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 we lost I, our Col- listener. Col- 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 Colts can't make a field goal. Falcons can barely hold on to the ball. Under is the right play. I see like a 17-14 kind of game. Yeah, Who thinking, wins? I don't know. I'm thinking if Vinatieri uh, misses another one, he will be... Chopping block. Involuntarily retired, I guess is the right word maybe. Fair enough. A.K.A. cut. They have a lot of money tied up in Vinatieri. That's Kick for success. Um, I'm on the Falcons plus one and a half for seven game, and I guess Falcons plus two? No, how does that go? I gotta go backwards, right? To one. To one, so I'm on Falcons plus one uh, for my three game pick. Uh, it's a total square play in this spot. I, I'm 100% aware of that. I'm okay with it. Uh, my guess is that the front seven, uh, including uh, Atlanta's, actually got some of the best tackling cornerbacks I've ever seen, and maybe that's just a product of uh, the last two games I've watched. I've actually watched Atlanta Falcons games. One because they were on Sunday Night Football, but the other game, even against Minnesota, where they got trounced. Um, I'm really a fan of their defense, especially if Deion Jones can stay healthy. Uh, That being said, the reason I say that is because Jacoby Brissett, so far in two games this year, has the least passing yards through the air. Passing air yards, he has the least. He doesn't throw long passes. Jackson has more? What's that? Jackson has more? Of course he has more. Nice. What a weird thing to ask. I mean... He struggled for the first few weeks, so. What Jackson are you talking about? Lamar. I'm, a, I'm just going to move yeah, on. Yeah, just go. Now. Considering the fact he threw 60 yards in the air against the Dolphins. That's true, I guess. <laughs> I forgot they played the Dolphins. Point being is his, tra- his passes in the air travel an average of 1.7 yards. I mean, that's, he's throwing, they're throwing a lot of backwards. They're throwing a lot of behind the line. Um, again, I think the Colts are an equally matched team, which only really tells me that, that the line should be different here. The line actually should be uh, Colts minus three, and it's not. So, I mean, it may be a full square play, but I'm on Falcons in both bets. Yes, and I, I forgot to point out that both myself and Fake Token have this on both the seven and the three game picks. So In the, in the Colts? Yeah, well, I, I'm on the Colts. He's on the Falcons. Got so. it. So. Let's hope for a one-point game. That uh, Let's hope for a Falcons blowout. Well, let's see what the home team can do there. But we're moving on to the future Las Vegas Raiders traveling to I'll the, believe it when I see it. the Great White North in the Minnesota I'm with you Vikings. There, Togan. Until they play a down, I don't care. Uh, I don't care about license plates sold. I don't care about groundbreaking. Until they play a down in that stadium, I'm, I f- I'm feeling the long con. <laughs> Yeah. I, uh, yeah, anyway, we're not getting into that again. Uh, this game opened as... If there's any franchise that can con a city, it's the fucking Raiders. That, that is true. <laughs> that I will give it. the <laughs> well, They con their fan base. Uh, this game yeah, opened with... In their water to- All right, Minnesota as a touchdown favorite. It has moved to a nine-point favorite. Total sitting at 43 and a half. Yeah, anybody got a reason why on that moving two and a half points? I have no idea. I can't imagine how much money has been so coming every in time on this total. Antonio Brown sexually assaults a woman, they lose a half point. Uh, spread. Apparently, but uh, I mean that's about a point and a half. I mean, there's accusers coming be up out to almost a hundred by now, left and right. <laughs> but uh, neither myself nor fake and token fake <laughs> fake <laughs> token He's got a new nickname. Have a play on this, <laughs> but the random dice do. They are sitting on under the total of forty three. Uh, that is, I don't know. Oh, actually, 43 and, 43 a, half. and a half. Yeah, yeah. just it's yeah. moved since I put it in there. So That's what she said. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, you wish you felt something when you moved. Now, this is, uh, I don't know why you're, you're looking at me You're talking to me like or you're talking to Emily? <laughs> I think she's not here right now. Do you see Emily in this room? No, that's why I was talking to you, you oh, fucking really? dunce. All right, moving on. Is that like Ward dunce? He had a five-hour energy, you forgive him. <laughs> yeah, I know. Go. He's on hyper. Um, I'm on Oakland in this game. Uh, you've given me more and more points throughout the week. Um, Kirk Cousins has been on my do not bet list, so naturally I'm going to bet against him in this spot. 
I'm not in love with this play, but realistically, wow, what the hell was that word? Realistically, shits all over me because I, I <laughs> can't speak properly. And then all of a sudden, just the very next sentence, he fucks it up. Realistically, I will say this. I will make a, a disclaimer on this. It was really hard this week for me to find seven games that I liked. So this is probably, if you had to rank them in terms of confidence scale, this is probably at the bottom seven of seven. Um, is that why you put it on both your seven and your three teamer? Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> because my three team, uh, my most confident picks aren't working so far. So I'm trying. I'm employing the fade, fade me in the three team contest. On top of that, I'm pretty sure no one else is really on this play, this specific play. I'm not on the play, but I, if I had to lean, I would lean towards the under and the Raiders. So Vikings are gonna blow up. It looks like. It looks like. I mean, it sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, well, it sounds right, but I, I think uh, I think the NFL is a fickle bitch. So anything that sounds right or is too good to be true, usually you're going to be on the wrong side. So I'm going to take Oakland plus nine, and then I guess uh, Oakland plus eight and a half in the three game. Oh, uh, yeah. So next game, moving on. Nobody else was on any play. No, not for that one. Just me. That's what I figured. So. Uh, well, I, the ran, the random dice on the under, but no, neither. That's right. Yeah, I don't sweat the random dice like Token does. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's sweat for me every game. We are moving oh, on. Sweat waking up to the first of two games with twenty or more points in the spread. This one being oh, God. the uh, the Boston Massacre Part Two, the Jets traveling to the Patriots. BT uh, Dubs. Fun fact: with the next two games we're about to talk about, uh, what was it? The Jets in New England and Miami and Dallas. A one hundred dollar parlay on both dogs will win you twenty two thousand five hundred. Wow! So, oh yeah, yeah. I remember so you looking. In that case up. you're looking to light that on fire, yeah. Uh, you can tip us if it wins. I I would appreciate that. Not the tip of your penis. Uh, <laughs> this game, I I have seen this New England uh, versus the Jets game. The opening line I've seen as low as ten. Yeah, Vegas Insider said it opened that as was a pick month, That was months ago. Yeah, yeah which, these lines open up in like March and April. Yeah, the first three or four weeks they set lines for early and. Yeah, but this game before Monday Night Football had New England as about a sixteen to seventeen point favorite, depending on where you looked. When uh, Simeon went down, it moved to twenty one and a half. Uh, total is sitting at forty three. Presumably, all of those points to be scored by New England. If you want to run super back in the line history, when Le'Veon Bell was signed by the Jets, this line was actually a pick'em. Jesus. I mean, wow. Yeah, exactly. Even on the road? Yeah, wow. the line was a pick'em. Wow, that's, that's a bold. The line was a pick'em with a 48 total. Now we have minus 21 with a 43 total. Minus 21 and a half, excuse me. So... Fake token is currently taking the Jets plus twenty one and a half. Uh, he has that on only the uh, seven game contest, which I appreciate because I think he is lighting that pick on fire. I have New England minus the twenty one and a half on both contests, the seven and the three gamer. I think New England wins in a snoozer. I don't think the Jets see the end zone. I think this is another game, just like the Miami game, where New England just dominates multiple special teams and defensive touchdowns, and I think New England wins in a laugher. Give me New England minus the 21.5. I would take New England probably minus up to 29.5 at this uh, point, because I just have absolutely zero confidence in anything that the Jets Speaking can do. Of that. Do you think any book would ever do a teaser in the opposite way? A sweetheart teaser? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be interesting to do. Like They're a usually on cards, though. Oh, okay. Usually, I don't know if they don't usually necessarily do off the board, but I've seen... Uh, they're called pleaser cards. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've never seen one before, so... I was just thinking about that, actually, a few nights ago, and I'm like... A two-team seven-point pleaser, I think, is two to one, or, like, plus 180. Okay. Might even be better than that, I think. I want to say it's two to one. Interesting. Nice. Could you imagine moving I, I, the New England to twenty-eight and a half, and moving Dallas to twenty-nine? Well, they're totally plausible. I have no play in this uh, in this spot. I, I I tend to take New England games with a grain of salt 
is the way, same way I take Alabama games. What does Bill Belichick plan to do in this game? Does he plan to get guys in to see the field? That way when there's legitimate games in December and January, they have quote-unquote uh, field experience and depth. Um, do we start working on fun plays? Do we start like trying to incorporate and see what tight end is going to emerge Fake point. on this Fake. team? Are we going to start giving... Are we going to give James White the ball 35 times on the ground? I mean, who knows what the fuck they're going to do. And for the love of God, take Brady out of this game when it's out of control. I understand we had a slight argument about this, and I don't care what Belichick says. And you know what? Even if he says we want to finish 60 minutes, blah, blah, this, because of the the hook and lateral play last year, he's got enough experience and enough pedigree to say, look, I'm going to incorporate this play 60 minutes bullshit to everyone except number 12 you the entire season hinges on him i mean if there's any if there's ever a team that relies uh, who's the most valuable to not only the league but to their own team it's it's tom brady so this whole play 60 minutes to finish i get what he's trying to do and the message may feel weaker but between 12 and belichick and their pedigree and their history i don't think any of the other 52 players on that roster would have gotten the message any less if Tom Brady sat out. They would have been more pissed if Tom Brady shredded his knee trying to throw passes in the fourth quarter of a 43 to nothing game. Yeah, I mean, no play on me for, or no play with this for me if, on this one. Uh, I'd probably lean towards the Jets plus the points. I think they might get a backdoor cover. Uh, Gordon, I think he has a breakout game. Two touchdowns, probably over 100 yards. and Yeah. There you go. I'll offer Spike a, uh, a a a charity point here, if you'll accept. And Fake Token's not here, so he's at the mercy of, of our acceptance. Okay, let's hear it. Can you guess the exact total number of points the Jets will score tomorrow? Uh, down to the half a point. What? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently you can score half a point in a game. Uh Miami might be getting half point sympathies here in week fifteen. Yeah, I'll say they put up three points. All right, if he gets that exactly right, I'm willing to give him a point. Okay, that's fair. All right, there we go. I, and think I, they I, a touchdown. I may have overshot that because I honestly, I, I definitively don't think they'll see the end. You're right; they're going to score two whatsoever. <laughs> Sa- safety first play, and then okay, <coughs> it'll be run away. But, well, the only way that they're going to get, that, a, and then they block a extra point to run it back for the three. <laughs> I'm fucking believable. Let's just move on to a game. Hey, you get extra point. Or a game none of us have a play on. The other 20 plus point spread. Uh, Miami traveling to Dallas. The now Josh Rosen led Miami Dolphins traveling to Dallas. Uh, opened as a 16 point favorite, currently at 22 to 23, depending on where you look. Total sitting at 47. Seems like the type of thing where. I mean, it, it's got to be Dallas scoring all of the points in order to or hit that uh, total. 90%. Yeah, I just – this is another game where I don't think the dog gets close to the end zone. Maybe a field goal or two, but I just don't see Miami being able to do Over anything. Over under red zone uh, drives one and a half <laughs> for Miami. Oh, under. Under. Under for sure. I, I would say. I'll take the over in that. Two, two trips to the end zone – or red zone? For the Dolphins? I would take, I, 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 would take that. I think that's a good line, though. Yeah, no, it, it's definitely a good line, but it's just not I, something I, I see them doing. Over, so. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, Josh Rosen being thrown into the fire. I guess if they're going to tank, tank and see what you can get out of your uh, uh, hopefully, maybe, possibly starting quarterback for next year, see how he handles adversity, and just hope he doesn't get injured. This may be pure bias here, but I'm still trying to hold on and still trying to find some shred of decency that to to go with my bold prediction last year that he of the five quarterbacks drafted last year is going to be the best. And so far he is the worst. So it's not going well he for me. He finally gets to start this year though. He started all last year. But I think uh I think he might have a good coaching staff um, next year in this spot. I think he'll be the starter next year. So this will be basically a, a complete audition for, what, 14 weeks? If he stays healthy and uh, keeps performing. I think he's got the arm. I think he's got the smarts. I, I just don't think there has been 
I just don't think there's been competent offensive minds around him. So this year, probably not going to be either. Uh, let's see if they get somebody new in there next year. Uh, I think he's he's an upgrade from Fitzpatrick. So I agree with that by far. So I mean, but so far he's trailing what? What was it? Baker Mayfield, Lamar Jackson. Who else Josh was there last year? Josh Allen and Sam Darnold. So he's five of five. And Darnold's in on mono right now. So <laughs> and he's still five of five. Yep. <laughs> Speaking of new quarterbacks, we can move on Carolina, to, Arizona? to the now-benched Eli Manning. Oh, okay. We're going that way. We're going to Daniel like Jones <laughs> going to Tampa Bay to take on what the fuck is happening with the Buccaneers. Uh, this is sort of a... Well, it is happening with the Buccaneers. They're 1-1. One one. Uh, yeah, but how are they 1-1 one one when they've been that bad or they've looked that bad in some of these games? Right, they, see, let me break it down for you. See, they, they played the 49ers week one. They lost. They did not score as many points as the 49ers oh, did. For fuck's so sake. that's 0-1. So they, they, they open as they played the Panthers in they week open two. They opened as a four-point favorite. more points than the Panthers. At home. That makes them 1-1. One one. They, are, also they one have moved one to five-and-a-half-point yes. favorites. <laughs> Because, pre- presumably because of the benching of Eli Manning and not knowing what you're going to get out of Daniel Jones. Uh, drafted with the sixth overall pick, the Giants have finally decided to go in a new direction. Uh, this is a game I am actually on, and I am on the total, which is sitting at 48, and I am taking the under. Uh, as is fake token. We are on the same side of this one, which kind of annoys me because I wish we had been on opposite sides because we're on opposite sides of all our other fucking picks. Uh, this is a game where He's I just got only one, so. I, I see two rather incompetent offenses just kind of trading three and outs. Uh, this is probably going to be a boring snooze fest of a game. And I could easily see something like a 17-14 type game. So give me the under in this one. I'm feeling, I I actually feel pretty confident about it, even though I didn't put it on my three-teamer. I'm actually uh, on a play on this as well. And I actually believe the Giants just got a whole heck of a lot better because they have a more accurate, younger version of Eli Manning. And they still have all the same weapons around him. Um, I think there's no chance they're winning the East. There's no chance they're making the playoffs. However, there's a very good chance they're winning this game with Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones, I believe, will get his first victory. I am on the Giants' money line because the Buccaneers make rookie quarterbacks look sensational. And the money line is currently 210, which I believe is good enough for a bonus point. Yes, it is. And so give me Daniel Jones, 21-17, Giants go in and embarrass the Buccaneers because you're right. The Buccaneers should be all over this game, but they are mired in mediocrity for the dawn of time, since the dawn of time. Whatever. Point being is they suck. And I like the Bucks, and they suck because... The Giants actually, even with under Eli, were fifth in the league in total offense. I think that gets better from there. The Buccaneers, 26th in the league in total offense. Yeah. No, I see a lot of scoring in this one, believe it or not. Even though the total does seem a little high, I see a 24-27 kind of game. Bucks getting the win with a walk-off field goal. Jones looks pretty good in this game, as well as a breakout game for Barkley. So, I mean... I was actually gonna gonna compliment you saying that. Yeah, Barkley rushes. I think Barkley has 180 total yards in this game. I would probably almost take the over in that. So, and you have a play on this game. So I took the Giants plus the points. There you go. All right. I was waiting for you to actually say that. He did. Yeah, I, I actually picked up Jones and... Your five-hour energy isn't kicking in yet. Yeah, it really yeah, I, I, I believe I Dude, took I usually Jones miss what he says, and I caught it. I took Jones as a bench player right now, and if not th- two out of my three leagues, if not three of my leagues. you ever seen the movie so. Bruce Almighty? Years yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember when, like, Seth... Uh, not Seth. Steve Carell's character was doing the news, and Bruce took over him and made him, like, gibberish... Yeah, <laughs> when he's about ready to make a pick, that's all I hear. Fair enough. No, you want to hear it so you can fade my ass. No, I don't want to hear it. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> it is true because he said, like, are you going to make a pick? Like, a lot of times I people, when you, you I go have, through this whole spiel and I'm like, did you make a pick? And everybody else is like, yeah, you made a pick. And I just hear, la, 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 I give my pick so people can fade me and put their kids through college. There you go. Happy birthday, Token. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> 
Yeah, well, actually, we're a few minutes past his birthday, but whatever. I'll give yeah, him the, uh, the sympathy vote. Moving on. <laughs> this is going awesome. Yeah. Thank you for making me host this one, you fucking idiot. You're very so welcome, you, you five-hour energy. bushy red muppet. <laughs> Do it taste like ass? <laughs> Carolina traveling to Arizona. This is my favorite game of the week. This line has moved like a motherfucker. Opening as Carolina as a three-point favorite, currently sitting at Arizona as a two-point favorite. Well, so I, can, I mean, you have to expect the line movement in this game. Five-point shift in this game. Absolutely bad shits. I. Uh, have no idea what to make of this game because I'm still not sold on Kyler Murray, so I'm not touching this one. Neither is uh, Fake Token. The Dice, however, have Carolina Moneyline. Even though the money line is only plus 110, they're not taking the points. They are I going like for the Carolina win outright. So that is the only play amongst the three of us here. I actually like the Dice's play. All things considered, even though it doesn't get a point, I think that's and from a betting perspective, I like that play. Yeah, no play on me. I, or no play on my choices for this <laughs> at <What>? all. <laughs> I think this game might even end in a tie. Ooh. Arizona with two. When was the last time we saw a team with two ties in a season? I don't think it's happened. I think it has. I'll, I'll go it's probably crackery. been back in the 40s, if so, or something. It's got to be... Pre-Super Bowl era, I believe. Okay, well, continue talking. I'll look. No, uh, I, I see like a 21-21 kind of game. Maybe 2020, something around there. Yeah. I don't know. This just seems like such a strange spot to me. that uh, Nobody wants to win. Yeah, I just... I, uh, I don't just, know. I'm just... I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, of, of Carolina right now because I think... Cam Newton is the person that's keeping them down. Uh, I am all about Kyle Allen making his second career start because he's. I thought make- it was Brian St. Pierre, or is he in the league? No, he's he's in the league anymore. No, he's he, he's actually coaching at my high school. His dad taught me driver's ed. <laughs> I was just dropping that name because just, that that's the last backup quarterback from Carolina I can remember. Uh, Chris Winky. <laughs> that's about the last one I can remember. <laughs> It's because of the last name. Uh, holy cow! Yeah, no, it's. I actually think that. I think Kyle Allen might might be the better fit for this offense, and I know that sounds crazy because Cam Newton. It ain't crazy. I think it might be the beginning of the end for Cam Newton here in the spot. Oh, it wouldn't surprise me at all if he's. Uh, you should stay off of post game reports. If if he's out of the league after this year, either by retirement or not being able to find work or whatever the case may be. Would you rather have Kaepernick or Newton? Uh, Cam Newton. Uh, yeah, probably Cam. Oh, okay. A healthy Cam. Let me, uh, let me rephrase that. Not uh, Cam at, in its current state. I would say current state, though. Oh, yeah, to choose one. Not knowing what Kaepernick's. So in the current state, meaning like Kaepernick who hasn't played a game in three years? Yes. I would take Cam Newton. Oh, okay. That was Shoulder like injury Kaepernick. and all, and now he has a foot injury. Yeah. But... I, if you said three years ago when Cam Newton was still playing, or excuse me, Cap- Colin Kaepernick was still playing, if I would take Colin or or, or Cam Newton, who was healthy-ish, who yeah, who was healthier. I think they're very similar quarterbacks. Terrible accuracy, and they can run the ball. Fair enough. But again, I think the offense might get a spark with Kyle Allen. Uh, so I like the Dice's pick of of, of Carolina money line. Despite the fact it doesn't get points here in our contest. Right. It doesn't get the bonus. You're right. Probably and ties lose. Betting line is the way to go on that one. But uh, still an interesting spot. Moving on. Mm-hmm. We have the now Drew Breesless New Orleans Saints traveling to face your fiancé in Seattle. My boo. Uh, open is a pick em. With a total of 50, and that has moved to now a Seattle as a four and a half point favorite, total sitting at 44 and a half. Uh, I don't have a play on this one. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater is, I guess, a confident backup, but I still don't have enough confidence in him to make a play He's on this one. One of the one. better backups in the league, so. Yeah, no, he, he definitely is. I just. 
uh, and they have enough weapons in New Orleans that if he's accurate and if he can get his throws to where they need to be, they can certainly make some noise, but it's still not enough confidence for me to want to make a play on this one. Uh, Fake Token agrees with me. He also doesn't have a play, but the dice do, and they are going over the total of 44.5, which I actually like in this spot. I, I think this is a, like I said, if Teddy Bridgewater is on, I think both of these teams can trade points like they're in the Big 12. And uh, just kind of. I don't see quite that much scoring, but. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it's not going to be like a 66 to 58 type game, but I, I certainly think that they can put up a, a bunch of points uh, in this one, and I, I, I do like that play, but I'm not touching this one personally. So, fun fact there has not been a team with two ties in the season, but there has been a team with ties in consecutive weeks. Week 14 and week 1 of the following season. Ah, oh, interesting. Who was that? Cincinnati Bengals in 1981. And 82. And 82, yeah. Okay, interesting. So that's kind of... All right. But that, not. That's something. Yeah, so... Um, I was out. What game were we on? <laughs> Saints Seahawks. Mm. Fiance. Yeah, I don't have a play on this uh, simply because... I don't know who's going to play quarterback for New Orleans or are they both going to play quarterback New Orleans. Uh, again, I said this, you know, I said this in week one, Seattle's home field advantage doesn't exist like it used to anymore. And obviously that's a product of obviously talent on the field. I can't really find a, a, a good spot. It's a complete layoff for me on all facets of this game. Interesting. But it might be a fun one to watch. It will definitely be a fun one to watch. I do believe this one will be higher scoring. I do like the over, but however, it's not one of my plays. I do like the Saints. I almost like them outright, but I don't think there's enough of bonus for the money line. Give me them plus the four and a half. I think Bridgewater is one of the better backups in the league. You will get a point. Yeah, the, yeah one bonus point for New Yeah, I think two might be more worth it. Uh, yeah, that's kind of how that works. I two know. points is always worth more than one point. <laughs> well, no, no, I mean two bonus points in addition to the one. Would be more worth it, in my opinion. I'll be safe and take the four and a half with the Saints. And I do think they produced really well in this game with Kamara on the run game as well as uh, Michael Thomas getting the ball through there. So I sure hope so. I made a fantasy football trade for Michael Thomas that happened pre-Drew Brees, and um, I'm having buyer's remorse. So I'm hoping that Michael Thomas is still a key component to this offense, which why wouldn't he be? Yeah, I, I think it'll be like a 30 to 24 kind of game. Yeah. The next game on the docket, which is a strange one to me, are the Houston Texans traveling to the what the fuck is going on with the L.A. Chargers. Uh, I are you basing that solely on the fact they lost to Detroit on the road and <laughs> they go all the way to the Eastern Time Zone? I mean, I don't give a you fuck are about the, the king of overreacting every week. I don't care about traveling to the Eastern Time Starts Zone. I, himself next week. I am looking at the Chargers as a team that I thought could win the AFC West. And they absolutely still can. They're 1-1. One and one. They have major injuries on defense. They, Melvin Gordon's, their star running back's not playing. <laughs> but they played an inferior team and did nothing but make mistakes – in spots where they shouldn't have been making mistakes. and this Philip is... Rivers has been making them for 15 years, dude. But the, the, wow. they sh- still should have been able to pull out something better than that fucking performance that we saw last week. Uh, they open as a four-point favorite at home. Uh, it has dropped to a three-point favorite, total sitting at 48-and-a-half. Just such a, a strange spot. I am... On this game, I'm still riding the uh, the Chargers minus the three. I just I, I I don't have the confidence in Houston. I just don't. Even though the the Chargers make the mistakes, I I feel like this is still a spot where they can get in there and they can win a couple of games, uh, or they they can win a game, especially at home. Uh, the random dice are on the same side as I am on this one. I just, <laughs> it, it, it's, I don't know. I, 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 I'm I still holding out hope that my initial look at the Chargers before the season started was correct. So we'll see what happens. But I, I, I'm, I'm thinking, hoping, praying those Chargers can pull it out. 
I think next I week he starts going crazy. Over. <laughs> I think next. I week thought it was mildly hilarious that you just shit on him and then took him minus. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think next week he starts fanning himself. This is why this week I'm fanning him right now. I'm on the Texans money line for the seven and the Texans plus the points, which is two and a half, I believe, right? Yeah, two and a half in that game F- for the three gamer. So if Spike said it best, fade him and all out. Yeah, unfortunately, I uh, I am on the same side as him. I'm a little bit more confident in Philip Rivers because of the guy you mentioned, Austin Eckler. I think I think Austin Eckler is going to be the reason that Melvin Gordon doesn't get paid. Uh, Thomas Davis has been holding the glue together for this Chargers defense um, as guy by guy falls. Uh, my guess theoretically is the fact that this defensive line gets to Deshaun Watson because it seems like whoever plays Houston gets to Deshaun Watson, despite the fact that they traded for Laramie Tunsil. Um, Deshaun had 159 yards against Jacksonville. The Chargers defense is probably a slight step down. Uh, I like the fact that they're at home. Clearly that the line reflects that. I think we're looking at something along the lines of you know 26-20. So I, I, I'm with you, Spikes. Chargers get the cover. I'm still a little more high on the Clippers than you are. Yeah, well, I mean, I have future bets on them, so I... I oh, by the way, that's a pick. I, I still... Okay. I've got future ticks. They're not winning, they're not winning the West. Future tickets on the Texans, they're, so... They're not, they're not winning the West, but they're... they're I think they're taking a step back, 100%. I, I think they're 9-7 they're and seven or 10-6. and six. One of which may be good enough to get you in. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm still holding out hope, but I think you're right. I think that is was Philip Rivers a Hall of Famer? Uh, is it like, unfortunately, no. yes? I mean, I would lean towards the no. Career longevity and statistics? I mean, he's in. I mean, it's just it depends on the voters. I guess it's all about the hardware, right? I think it's all about the hardware. I think the better question right now is... Postseason performance has been... Not that great. Right, but neither has a lot of, a lot of people's uh, postseason performance. That's the thing with... Okay, well, let's take the flip side. The guy who just got benched, Eli Manning. Is he a Hall of Famer? No, Simply God, no. only because of two would, Super Bowl rings? I and would two say Super Bowl MVPs? the only way he gets in is because of those, and I don't think he, he should is, get in. He is a career 500 quarterback. He is top 10 in his era in touchdowns, and he has two Super Bowl rings with two Super Bowl MVPs. But he's an average quarterback. I would say no. I'm, I say he gets in, but it's not, it's not simply because of his sole talent alone. And he's a Manning. Yeah, I, I think the Manning thing helps him, but I, I don't think he gets in. I, sure long-term he bets? No. He's not a first ballot Hall of Famer, I will say that. Yeah. No, but I think he gets in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I, I think that would be such a travesty if he actually got into the Hall. I don't buy that, but, you know. Well, I, I agree. I think the Hall of Fame is not the Hall of really good or Hall of had a couple good years. Or right place, right time. I agree. I don't think he should be in it. It's based on your performance throughout your entire career and what you're all about. So Right, but a lot of voters believe in that hardware. If you win Super Bowls... I think it does matter a little, but not... Because if you're an an average quarterback, you're not getting in. But if you're an average quarterback with two Super Bowls, you're getting in. I I think he's getting in. But... I think the only reason people are talking about him even being a contender isn't because he has two Super Bowls. It's, it's because he has two Super Bowls against the Patriots, and the fact that the they Patriots the dragon twice. Yeah, the the fact that the Patriots were so dominant, yeah, especially right place, right time. Especially the year that they essentially finished eighteen and one, uh, because of Eli Manning. That is why people are talking about it. If this was just two random Super Bowls, they'd be talking about him the same way you talk about Trent Dilfer, is that he game managed, he won two Super Bowl MVPs too. game managed a team with a superior defense that happened to win those Super Bowls. Mm, I disagree on Eli as a game manager in those parts of his career. I yeah. mean, two Super Bowl MVPs, that matters. He's not a first ballot, but he gets in. That's my take on it. Despite the fact that, yeah, you're right, he did slay the dragon twice. Yeah, and he only made the playoffs four times in his career. Yeah, and that's fifty uh, percent. Fifty percent conversion rate. <laughs> uh, that, that's that's just not good enough. So how many years? Fifteen. Uh, he was drafted in 
four. So yeah, yeah fifteen. Uh, fifteen years. So he made the playoffs a quarter of the time, and he was won the Super Bowl fifty percent of the times that he made the playoffs. Fifty so percent yeah. conversion rate. He's in, he's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, we'll put up a poll on, on Vegas Squares at Vegas yeah, Squares. Uh, that's a good one, actually. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think the rest of his numbers are so poor that uh, he's not in. But he shouldn't be in. What I numbers mean. are poor, though? I mean, his, other than his win yeah, loss record, his win loss record, and he has too many interceptions, and he gets sacked more than just about anybody. He has more Super Bowls than Brett Favre, and and he has less interceptions. <laughs> And Brett Favre is, uh, yeah, but, was obviously clear cut. But Brett Favre had significantly more touchdowns and more passing yards. Okay. And those matter. But so do Super Bowls. <sighs> yeah. How many seasons did Favre play, though? 18? Fuck, I don't know. Uh, I yeah, but I mean, let's, let's, let's take the Jets years and throw those out. And the last year in Minnesota. But those count, though. Just being around, being in the NFL, uh, and then again, that's where the knock on you knock Eli Manning for just being in the NFL and being average. Well, Brett Favre was average in the NFL those years with the Jets. Yes. Let's see. I'm trying to look up Peyton or Eli Manning stats. Fifty-six thousand yards, three hundred and sixty. He's a two to one intercept, TD to interception ratio. He's an eighty-four point one passer rating. He's in the he's in the Hall of Fame. What about uh, accuracy completion? Sixty percent. Sixty. Uh, yeah, that's below average. But that's a that's a horrible statistic to use to keep him out. No, I, I mean, it would be fence, but he would just be shy, in my opinion. I, I think he's in. No question about it. Mm. Two-time Super Bowl champion, two-time Super Bowl MVP, four-time Pro Bowler, Walter Payton, man of the year. He's a Manning. He's in. I, I, I think the fact that he's a Manning is going to go – Further than maybe I care to admit. Like, I'm not. I don't have to justify that I agree with it. I'm, I'm just oh. telling you he's in. I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just telling you he's in the Hall of Fame. If I had a vote, I would not vote him in. But yeah. I think he's in the Hall of Fame. Oh. All right. Side Moving fact. on. Yes. Moving on to more degeneracy. How about the now uh, Mason Rudolph-led Pittsburgh Steelers traveling across the country to take? The Jimmy G 49ers on in San Francisco. This is a game that I think is going to be very interesting. Uh, sitting currently at a San Francisco six and a half point favorite. Total sitting at 43. Uh, there's a couple of plays going on in this one. Uh, fake token has taken the Steelers plus six and a half. And I wish he were here because I would love to hear him justify that because I don't know what the fuck he sees in Pittsburgh being led by uh, Mason Rudolph. That he clearly believes that the Ben Roethlisberger at quarterback is not worth five and a half points. Well, maybe, but I am... I would agree with that statement. I, I am on the other side of this one. I think Jimmy G is looking like San Francisco expected him to look. I think San Francisco rolls in this one. San Francisco minus the six and a half. I have that on my seven gamer. Uh, I actually really like this spot. I'm probably going to lay some pretty heavy lumber on this one too. <coughs> yeah, this one no play for me, but if I had to choose a side, I would take the Steelers. And you know why? Because I don't think that difference in quarterbacks is worth that much points. And I think Mason Rudolph... Has learned enough from uh, what he has uh, accomplished in his last game, and I think he's got a lot of talent at wide receivers, not just towards the top, but even towards like the fourth and fifth wide receivers. Like Washington is going to be something to look forward to in the future for sure for the Steelers if they hold on to him. So, yeah, I would like to hear uh, Tony Johnson's explanation on that too. I mean. Unless he is just that high on Mason Rudolph, I can't figure it out. The defense for Pittsburgh is allowing 445 yards a game through two weeks. Um, San Francisco is scoring 36 points a game and uh, is sixth in the league in total offense at 414 yards a game. Nothing about this screams that the Steelers should be in any kind of a fight here. But, again, the NFL is funny, and I think that's the exact reason why Tony Johnson is making that pick. Um Again, I will I will probably I have a play on this game and it's on the under because I'm not sure that these two teams 
will be able to stay close. I think I'm with you with the 49ers. I think this game is going to be, uh, I don't know about boat race, but maybe somewhere between 10 to 14 point victory. I don't know if the Steelers can score. James Connors hurt. The, the wide receivers, uh, Juju's a lost man on the island out there. Like, no one is throwing him the ball. <laughs> I mean, you got rid of Antonio Brown, which for multiple reasons, not only just on the field, was probably the right move. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's just it, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me that... Is Roethlisberger worth five and a half points? Maybe not, but you're, you got a guy who's making his first start uh, of his career out on the West Coast against a team that's been playing improved defense, with a quarterback who we all believe, or at least financially, the 49ers believe, uh, that he should be the next coming of Tom Brady. And so far, he's looked like it. I, I'm high on the 49ers. You know, we, I talked about you know, you know, what the Bills did on the road two weeks in a row, and I didn't give enough credit to that. I give credit to what the 49ers have done going across the country two weeks in a row to play the Bengals and the Bucks. Again, not fantastically talented teams. I think I'm, I'm high on the 49ers this year. And... I think I think you get a ten point victory here in this spot. Twenty four fourteen. No, I could see that. I, I, I'm. I, I think James Conner is good to go in this game. He is listed as probable, but I mean, you, you got a knee like, injury. Though. Yeah, yeah. he'll be like a running back two almost in the situation. Yeah, you don't know what you're going to get well, out I'm of him. Not starting him in any of my fantasy. I think about running back two on their depth chart. I'm like, no, he's getting the carries, but. Is Minka Fitzpatrick going to add anything to this? I mean, their defense has been terrible. Uh, they traded can't obviously work. for Minka. Yeah, it can't be worse. You're right. Uh, that may that helps me because maybe if their their defense has a pulse, that helps me toward the under in the spot. So. That is uh, my play is the under forty three and a half for my seven game. I mean, that's uh, it, it, you're probably right on the money with that one. But uh, the Sunday night game. This is an intriguing one with the Rams traveling to the Cleveland Browns. Uh, this game opened with the Rams as a two and a half point favorite, currently sitting at three and a half points. And uh, the total opened at 51, and it has dropped to 47 and a half. I just got flashbacks of <laughs> last week Browns country. <laughs> <laughs> Lions country. Everything was a country last oh, yeah. week. <laughs> For 80% of them, yeah. But luckily the Browns were on the road last week because if you did say brown country, like that can be double meaning for like Multiple. the toilet or your ass. <laughs> so Or other meanings along those lines. Uh, I am currently sitting on the Rams minus a three and a half in this game. I have that on both my seven and my three teamer. Uh, I... After the Super Bowl last year, I said that the Rams, the, the Patriots have set out the blueprint on how to beat the Rams, and I don't think the Browns have the defensive ability to pull off being able to beat the Rams. Even though they are on the road traveling to Cleveland, I still think that the Rams can outpace, outgun, out everything Cleveland on offense. Uh, I don't know about the total in this one, but this this is a the type of game where I expect the Rams to... Not saying that it's going to be an easy victory, but I think uh, beating that three and a half point spread is going to be the the easier part of this. Uh, the random dice disagree. They took Cleveland plus three and a half, and fake token double disagrees. He is taking not only the Cleveland Browns plus a three and a half, but he is also taking the Browns money line at plus one fifty five, thinking they can win outright and um, shooting for that bonus point. Both nine and seven are. With the three. He has both of those on the seven, and he does have Cleveland plus the three and a half on the three gamer. Okay, interesting. No, I, I, I don't have a play on this one. Browns on a short week. I would lean towards the over in this one if I had a play, but I mean, that, that total is still a little high. I don't think the Rams' offense will produce as much as I think, so I'm sticking away from this one. Yeah, the total is weird because considering, you know, all things considered, the, the Rams are averaging 28.5 points per game. So I'm not quite sure what they believe that the Browns are going to put up because if 
if Rams stick to their PPG, then you're talking about Rams covering easily. We're 28 to 20. 21 in that spot. Right. Or wait, 47. Yeah, 28 to 20, basically, in that spot if you're liking the over. Um, short week, obviously, yeah, you're right. But I, I, I think, you know, they kind of put it in cruise control about the third quarter once – uh, they realized Luke Falk was going to be restricted by Adam Gase, which, again, I, I will say it was stupid. You know, I understand he's a third-string quarterback, but you're a quarterback guy. Like, you're just staring right at him. Well, just open it up. Op- you've got nothing to lose. I just, I don't get when they get the, oh, these quarterback gurus, and then they just they hinder their quarterbacks. Um, I'm starting to watch the Rams adapt to your, you know, strategy to beat them. I, I've seen Jared Goff make audibles at the line last week against the Saints, and I'm starting to believe that that ability to 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 show new reads after the the headset has been shut off might not be a benefit to any teams. And if 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 they've been trying to stop, if the Panthers or Saints tried to stop uh, Jared Goff, they were unsuccessful in that spot. Cleveland's got a tough tough schedule. Uh, they've got this game, then they go to Baltimore and San Francisco, and then New England. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get any they can easier. Go one and two or zero oh and three, most likely. It doesn't get any easier after the Rams. So I think they've got to win a home game here because they got the next three on the or three of the next four on the road. So um, I like your Rams three and a half because I think they're the better team. But uh, Tony Johnson might be up to something with uh, the Brown. The Browns. Browns might be in desperation mode already in week three. Well, it'll certainly be interesting, especially uh, uh, the uh, Baker Mayfield there at home against such what should be a powerhouse team in the Rams. Be interesting to see how he uh, adjusts, especially if the Rams get out to an early lead. Uh, Mayfield may have to air it out maybe more than uh, the original game plan was. So curious to see how that one goes. Uh, But yeah, I do like the Rams in that spot. Uh, but the final game of the slate... Let me ask you something. This. Yeah. Would you would you have believed me if I told you, hey, in fantasy football, after the first two weeks of the season, the receiver to own in Los Angeles is none of them. <laughs> the leading receiver yeah. is 10 receptions for 96 yards. Yeah, that's not great. Yeah, that's not going to get it done. Yeah. So I've got Cooks, and yeah, I can tell it's, it's definitely not going well over two weeks. Yeah, I've got Cup in long league, and yeah. He's the leader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I, I'm disappointed with him, sadly. <laughs> yeah, cute dog. Please, thanks. Okay. You can move on now. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. The Monday so night sorry game. Sorry to interrupt. The Monday night game where none of us have any play on this one. Uh, Chicago traveling to Washington opened as Chicago is a five-point favorite, currently sitting at four and a half, and the total sitting at forty-one. Uh, I. I if I were to touch this one, I might lean towards the under just because I have no faith in the ability of either of these offenses to put up points. Uh, Trubisky has uh, 348 yards through the air and zero touchdowns at this point. Uh, the Redskins, I mean, what are they doing? Because they can't move they're the ball. They're playing decent defense. Actually, they're, yeah. playing, they're playing halfway decent ball. The, uh, but, I mean, this is a spot where Chicago's averaging 9.5 points a game, Washington's averaging 24, but they're giving up 31.5 points a game. So does that mean that they're going to be able to outpace Chicago, or does that mean that Chicago finally gets a spot where they can score some points? Well, Chicago, I don't know. Chicago, from a betting standpoint, can't be trusted at this point. Uh, however, they do, uh, to debunk what you just said, they do come into a spot where Washington is ranked 30th in points, and dead last in yards allowed. So playing good defense was probably not the right thing to say there. Um, I think the spot here is to take the points. And I and I don't even love that. I would stay far away from this unless you are legitimately chasing huge losses. Uh, Case Keenum is, is, is good enough to lead this offense. I like... Um, Adrian Peterson to basically con- it's going to be ball control for Washington at this Games point. Games management. Yeah, it's going to be defense. It's going to be it's going to be ball control and pray that your defense can stop Mitch Trubisky, which again is not that hard lately. Uh, although he is four and zero in his last four road starts straight up. This 
all leans towards a close Monday night game, but this would be the one where, where Chicago finally gets that boat racing uh, win that everybody's been expecting. But the thing is, is they, they're, pride, they're prided on running the ball in defense. The defense is holding up its end of the bargain, and David Montgomery is coming along slowly. Uh, I don't like how Tariq Cohen's slowly being phased out of the offense, uh, per se. But, again, I'm staying as far away from this unless I just have an abysmal betting Sunday. Uh, and then my degeneracy will kick in. But if it does have to kick in, uh, I'm going to take four and a half points if I can get it on Monday night. Primetime dog, getting more than three, that yeah. would be my spot. It will be interesting to see how that line moves uh, right before kickoff on Monday night. So uh, that that's what I'm looking forward to, but I, I can't imagine I'm going to yeah, put we're a still dime looking on this at game. A, we're still looking at a half point to a point movement one way or the other. Yeah, I could see even almost a half, one and a half. Why do you say that? Because <laughs> I think money comes on the Redskins. So you think this game closes at three? I could see it closing at three instead of six, though. Yeah. If I had just one and a half point full movement, I'd see it closing at three. Because hmm. uh, not a lot of people have faith in that Trubisky offense. I, I agree with you, but I mean their defense in Washington is atrocious. A half point only. This line won't move more than a point. Hmm. And I will say that it moves in favor of Chicago. I, I think this line will. I think this line will be five by the time we kick off. Wow. Wow. I mean, I hope you're right because at that point I might degen it up and uh, ride Washington with you. But yeah, that, that, it, it's just such a weird game because last Half year point on a non-key number, and then you would then you would ride with me. What a, well, last what a year, tactic. Yeah, why not? <laughs> last year, I faded the push, faded the hell out of Trubisky. I I bet the under on the win total of the Browns, and then they came out and they played good football all year long. For the Bears, though, and, and you also but, faded yourself last year too. Yeah, but then he started playing, and I I just. It, it was just a strange season, and now when I actually have faith in Trubisky, based on what he did last year, he's done jack shit this year. He so. does tend to quote unquote shine on primetime games. Just put his helmet on. So, I mean, look at the game against the Packers last year. He had a great first half. Unfortunately, the Packers came back. Um, he he's he's been able on Sunday Night Football last year against the Vikings. He put on a good show, and, and the Vikings weren't the team that they are this year, but. Uh, I think they beat him by 16 points uh, last year. On primetime games, Mitch Trubisky has looked well, which I think is what gives people that false sense of confidence in, in his quarterback ability. So, again, nobody has a play. So yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll continue talking about this. It'll yeah. be an interesting one to watch, especially with Peterson I'm actually, Bay, I'm actually moderately interested. I, I, I'm rooting for Trubisky to be successful, but I don't think he's a good quarterback. Hmm. And, and part of me likes laughing at the fact that they traded a first – Two thirds and a fourth to move up one spot to get him. Oof. When San Francisco already said we don't really have interest in him. Yeah. Well, they wanted to make sure. Yeah. And the fact that Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes were skipped. Yeah, that is yeah. probably the most shocking part of the whole thing. Although hindsight's I, twenty twenty. I, I did well, just, I Deshaun Watson. I'm more shocked at. Well, I I, I just yeah. read a uh, uh, the article from after the 2017 draft with Mahomes saying that it was. Uh, you know, huge risk for huge rewards, and they thought he was too inaccurate at the time. He was time. a Big 12 quarterback, which at the time were not, had not been successful. Yeah. Recently they have been with Mahomes, Mayfield, and Murray. Before that, it was like a death sentence if you tried to go to the NFL and you played in the Big 12. You were... I mean, name a Big 12 quarterback that's not one of those three that's been successful. I mean, Cliff Kingberry even tried. It didn't work. Uh, oh, shit. I just had a name in mind. I forgot. I mean, Who's, Vince Young. That who, that flamed out. Who is that thirty-two-year-old rookie that got drafted by the Browns? Brandon Whedon. That's the one. Yeah. This was my, that one of the twenty-one quarterback experiment or whatever. What? For the Browns. You know, he is one of the oh, yeah. he is one of the jersey names. Yes. Yeah. No, he was an interesting one, but yeah, no, I, I think you're right. That Big Twelve is just such a, a weird Sage conference. Rosenfels, I mean, the list goes on. Big Twelve was like a death sentence if you tried to play professional football until recently. Uh, if we are doing bold picks this week, which we may as well, even though we're not giving out bonus points for our bold picks this year like we did last year, 
Uh, Fake Token believes that the Cleveland Browns uh, will be down after the first half and come back with a fourth quarter touchdown to win the game late. And he believes that, uh, like, I mean, he's got Cleveland for two of his picks on the seven gamer and on the three gamer. So he's he's riding them pretty high. I think that we are going to see multiple defensive touchdowns in both the New England game and the Dallas game. I, I think that the Jets and the Dolphins offenses are so incompetent that coughing up the ball multiple times for scores is... Kyle Van Noy with a fumble recovery touchdown. There we go. I'll, I'll take that. So I, I, I think these are certainly games to watch. I think these are certainly places for both Dallas's and New England's defense to shine. I've already got Dallas, or, uh, New England's defense in fantasy. Uh, they put up 100 points for me last week in our fucking crazy point-giving-out <laughs> league. Point well, giving. Well, where kickers get, like, 25-plus points. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, but in our league, they get 25 points for a 40 to 49, 35 points for a 50-plus, and that's it. Yeah. You don't get anything for kicking a field goal 39 or less, or you don't get anything for extra Misses points. Or, uh, so it's only rewarding long field goal kickers. Yeah. I'm glad because I had uh, my kicker miss extra points. So. <laughs> Riveting. <laughs> uh, he wasn't as bad as Ben. Do you have a bold prediction? Yes, I have a bold prediction, and that is the Cardinals-Panthers ends in a tie. I like it. 21-21 or 20-20. Piggybacking like off of your bold prediction, uh, for mine to be right, yours has to be wrong. Kyle Allen gets his first win as Carolina Panthers starting quarterback. All right. There we go. In overtime. I dig it. Any other last thoughts? What is Random words? Dice's bold prediction? Random Dice. Oh, bold. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How would you do that? I have no I, I'd have to ask the wife to, to make You'd have a to prediction. make like six bold predictions and then roll the dice to see what Two one. safeties in one game. <laughs> Two ties in one week. Oh, there we go. All right, we'll we'll give the dice two ties in one week as there their bold prediction. That'll be their bold prediction. I wonder oh, if you boys. could bet that somewhere as a prop. You could bet. bet a tie or overtime at some books for sure. I know. If you if 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 football American football did three way lines like soccer, not American football, what would the draw be on those three way lines? Oh, be huge. Forty to fifty to one. No, I don't know if it's maybe that big, more. But maybe eight to ten to one. Yeah, I was going to say twelve. Well, just the chance of going to overtime. If I looked at some of them, some of those are twelve to one already. Nice. Just going to overtime. Yes. Is twelve to one. Wow. No, they're no, they're no, they're, no, they're not. No, they're not. Uh, he's busting out the phone. Uh, uh, right. Unless if that was for the tie. Or unless that was for specific games that was busting out twelve to one. I'll say. Going to overtime is six to one at best. At best, how many games go to overtime in a season? Do we have that number? I'm sure we can get that real quick while we're wrapping up here. Yeah, because this seems like the the type of thing where knowing how many times you can expect this to happen per week, and then now that the excuse me, now that the overtime period is only ten minutes long. Yeah, that's true. So. Less time in overtime should mean more ties. Oh, I, I just pulled up one random game. Overtime, yes or no? Uh, it's the Broncos-Packers. What would you guess the yeses? Overtime, yes or no, I will say 9.5 to 1. No, I, what would you say? Aaron? I'll say 6. It's 21 to 2, so 10.5 to 1. All right. So, all right, well, we're kind of in the middle there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see... No, no action on tie though. At least at the book that shirts. So. That's not a good. Come on, can we get something here? Fucking a. <laughs> percentage of games, percentage of NFL games that go to overtime. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine it's that high. It's probably under twenty. I wonder if they have those on the bigger spread games, like the. Since two thousand and one, eleven percent of games have gone to overtime. Only eleven. Okay. So one in ten. So that's uh, that's actually kind of high. It's high, it's sort of higher than I expected, but oh no, that's odd. Even points, including overtime. Never mind. Oh Jesus Christ! I think I it's know. I think it's closer to six to one that a game will go into overtime. Anyway, that's enough of this nonsense. Thank you very much for listening. They've already turned off. Don't worry. Let, about let, that. Let's wrap this shit up.
Uh, oh no, no, that was a different one that had a higher oh spread. I just cut it, cut it, yeah. cut it. Right. Ten to one on most. Give us the sponsors. All right, let's thank sponsors here. Whoa, where's that sound? That was a weird sound. The exit. Wow. Uh, Twelve ounce sports radio seat giant promo code Twelve ounce sports for discounts on sporting events, concerts, and theater tickets. Uh, Thrive Fantasy enter promo code Twelve ounce sports for all things daily fantasy sports and BetSpurts, where you can become a BetSpurt if you are really, really good in a really, really specific betting avenue. Uh, enter code Football Thirty Five for three dollar and twenty five cent a month. All access to the BetSpurts website, including all of the gambling. It sounds weird to call them BetSpurts. All the gambling experts, aka BetSpurts. I mean, you got to keep saying BetSpurts to reinforce it their role. Brand. I love their, I love their the philosophy, but BetSpurts that T that hard that hard T doesn't really roll like an expert. Yeah, BetSpurt. No, I get you. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. Constructive criticism. We will be back in week four to give you more of our degenerate picks. Hopefully... Spike is fading himself. <laughs> <laughs> I probably will be at that point. For Aaron, for Token, we are hoping that fake Token is not getting anally probed at Area 51. I am Spike. We'll see you next week. Or maybe we are. <laughs>